here in front of the Munich Convention Center, which is the home of Europe's largest mineral show. We're about to step inside to see what makes this show so incredibly popular. So won't you please join us as we go in search of what's hot in Munich. I'm standing here on the balcony overlooking Hall A6. This is one of the four halls that makes up the Munich show. And because each hall is so diverse, I've asked a few friends to come and join me as co-host so that we can go through uh, the different halls. This is the mineral hall, so I've asked German collector and good friend of mine, Gerhard Wagner, to join me as co-host. Gerhard? Hi, Brian. Wonderful to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Now, Thank you. this is a enormous hall, and I can't believe this is just minerals. True, yeah. This is only one hall, and here's the main hall for the minerals, I will say. That's fantastic. Now, there are two areas of interest here that uh, I'd really like to uh, talk to you more about. One, it looks like there's a little museum down here with all yes. kinds of fabulous mineral specimens on display. It is a museum. It, it is a museum, and yeah. this is the Brazil, uh, the Brazil beauty uh, the themes topic, of the show. Yeah. This is the topic in this year, but we will show it later. Okay. And, um, you are really exciting if you go in. Well, fantastic. I'm really looking forward to this. This is going to be a real treat. Uh, there's another section over here yeah. where it kind of looks like this, this pavilion. What is this? <laughs> you are right. This is the mineral pavilion. Uh, we say the nickname is the White Temple. Okay. In the White Temple, you found uh, extremely high quality and minerals. And it's a really exciting area because all the special material is in one area. And this is the reason that we have the name, the Mineral Pavilion or the White Temple. Fantastic. So would it be safe to assume that this is where we're going to find the hottest things in minerals that are in the Munich show? Yeah, it is so. That's true. Okay. Let's go take a look. Yeah. After you. Good idea. <laughs> okay. Hi, Adam. Hi, good help. Hi. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. The world is small. It's nice to see you in Munich. Wasn't it? It's a big surprise to be here, actually. Really? Why it's a big surprise? You don't plan it? No, we actually made a big find in June this year that uh, okay. meant that we had to come over and deliver some very other nice specimens to some customers over here. So you have a special reason to come to Munich? A good reason. A good reason? <laughs> oh, okay, that sounds good. Some of it in the background there. Oh, okay, I see it here in the case. It's a new found? Yes. This is basically uh, a new pocket that we found in June, which we have named the 2010 pocket. Um, the reason, main reason for this being, the Adelaide mine has had two previous <laughs> famous mines. One in the 1970s, one in the 1990s, yeah. and now one in the 2010. Yeah. So it's a 20-year interval, it seems, between major finds of the Adelaide mine. Although, hopefully, that won't be the case for the next one. <laughs> As this looks like very, very nice, but I won't touch it because it looks like very fragile. It is, And I mean we can come with the camera directly on the on the case to see that beautiful and colorful stuff I like that. But I know you and I'm sure you have a special piece for us to show Again, to the people. I do have one rather nice one here, although unfortunately it's not quite as colorful, but okay. it makes but up for it in other ways. Oh, let us see. I'm showing you the unattractive side first, but it is a rather significant specimen. Really, really big crystals. Yes. We found crystals up to 14 centimeters long. How long? 14 centimeters 14 long. 14 centimeters. Which is about as big as they've been found with a termination on the end. There has been some bigger crystals found, but they are generally contact terminated or broken. So and especially because of the weight. Okay. The heavier the crystals get, the more likely they are to fall down if they aren't joined at both ends. Okay. So this is a brand new material? It is. 
and nobody see it before it has only just been released I have not even released it to the public yet I have been busily cleaning and perfecting the cleaning technique uh, and it's still got much work to do before yeah. the majority will be released in shoes on next year so I will say thank you very much that you show us the piece and this material no problem at all it looks like really really nice Hi, I'm Gerhard Wagner. Hi, I'm Andreas Steiner. Thank you for taking the time. You have a display of this fantastic find. Could you tell me, us, a bit about it? When, circumstances, how? Yes, this locality has a very special history. This is a mountain about which it has always been said there is nothing to find. My colleague and I went there because we wanted to get to the other side, into the Hollersbach Valley, to look for crystals. On the way over, we discovered a small spot with titanites. Then we thought, maybe there is something to be found here after all. If I understand that correctly, you did not actually plan to search in this area. No, this area was completely unknown. Everyone said, you don't need to look on the Graukogel. There is nothing there. Like, don't bother, you won't find anything anyway. And on the third day of our search, my colleague stumbled upon the cleft. I heard shouting from below. I was working on another quartz cleft and rocks had rolled downhill. Now I thought I might have hit him with the rock. So he was calling from below and as I climbed down, he was sitting on a grassy overhang with a huge specimen in his hand. Are you serious? Yes, it was an unbelievable experience, absolutely unexpected. I can just imagine that. When was that? That was already 10 years ago. And you have never shown anything? We kept it a secret because we had the mountain to ourselves, so we could collect in peace. Whenever we had the time, we always looked around at this mountain. So over ten years you were searching every now and then? Yes, unfortunately only six veins had usable crystals. But this find was not to be outdone. Indeed, one can see the unbelievable quality for Alpine Sphene. It is fantastic. Perhaps you can show us one close up? This is also an especially nice one. It consists of a large adelaria and a beautiful green titanite grown on it. And a beautiful chloride on it. And these were really just in loose chloride. We dug them out with just our hands. A floater? A floater. That was a dream situation. No contact point, nothing grown on it. No contact point. The chloride was totally loose and the specimens were almost clean because there was no overlying humus. To dig such things out is like Christmas. I can imagine. I can still see the smile upon your face. Yeah, yeah. Very beautiful. And what I find amazing and out of the ordinary is this pericline heart. Yes, this is also a special story. I just found this last year together with my uncle Reinhard. It was broken into three pieces. And as we were splitting the fine at home, we saw that the pieces fit together. When we glued the pieces together, this heart was the result. You found this in three pieces? It was broken in three pieces that then made up this heart. There were more pieces to it, but it is best this way. One could definitely say that. It is absolutely unusual and it makes the piece naturally, but very much out of the ordinary. Now, since Munich is called the city with heart, fair organizer Hannes Kaimann said that we must have this piece in Munich. Yes, he's right about that. Thank you very much, Andreas. You're welcome. I wish you continued success in your seeking, and I hope we see each other again next year. Thanks. Okay, we're here with uh, Ian Bruce in uh, uh, the Munich show, and this is Crystal Classics. Uh, we always cover you in, in Tucson at the Westward Look, and you're very well known for the incredible display cases that you always put together. We're always blown away by your displays here. And here again in this beautiful booth, you have this outstanding display, but it's a very different looking display. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing differently here in Munich? Well, Munich, the, the whole European market is a very different market. And in uh, Europe, we have, we have hundreds of years of tradition of collecting minerals. And uh, we, we try to cater to the European market, which is a little different than the American market. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have the cases filled with different things. We have one case full of German classics. This case is full of English classics. And, and we have them from every different part of the world. We try and separate them so that all the cases are filled with classic specimens from one part of the world or one region. Fantastic. 
Yeah, and then just the make of the cases. These aren't our typical uh, black cases with the fiber optic lights. These are all custom wood cases that you only use here. Am I understanding that yeah, right? Yeah, we use these for the Samari show and for the Munich show. Okay. Um, now I understand you got a few special pieces to show us. Yeah, we have a few things for you, Brian. Okay. Deanna's is going to carry them over. Hello, yes. Deanna. How are you? Hello, how Good are to you? see you. Yeah. This is something extra special, and of all places, we found this specimen in a in a collection in Switzerland. And you know, our company, we're always buying collections from all over Europe and all over America. And this was one piece that really surprised us. We went we went to Montreux in Switzerland to see a gold collection. Mm -hmm. It was one of Wayne's best customers over the last forty years, and the best specimen in the gold collection was a copper. Which we mistake as a, as a piece of art. We didn't realize yeah. that it is a natural copper. We just overlooked it and thought that's a nice piece of art. And just that's fancy. Just a look and discovered, wow, it's actually a copper. <laughs> what a great story! And this is a historic piece from uh, from the Yoshi Alum mine in. Uh, Michigan, Keweenaw Peninsula, and it's really rare because it's um, it's the crystallized wire copper, and has a little the little crystals on the end of the wires. It's this is this is the best known piece of uh, crystallized wire copper. Fan Extraordinary to find this in Switzerland. That is absolutely beautiful, fantastic. This is a wonderful, wonderful specimen. It's uh, it's been on display in the. Um, in the Natural History Museum in London, in the vaults for the last two years, we we, we loaned it to them, and uh, we were we were happy to get it back a few weeks ago. Fantastic! It's one of the one of the nicest gem aquamarine matrix pieces we've ever seen. And this is the first time it's it's been shown. First time it's ever been shown. Fantastic! Yeah, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's a real masterpiece. That it's is wonderful, beautiful. Wonderful so piece. gemmy. Yeah. The colors fantastic. No damage, no repairs. Wow. Just the way things should be. We purchased a, early this year a really famous um, Sumer collection, which was the Grosch collection, and we thought we're really lucky to have bought this this year. Mm -hmm. and a few months later, we landed a really, really good hit. It is one of the most famous collections in Germany in Sumer minerals. It is a third generation Sumer collection where the grandfather was in Sumer and worked there as a miner together with his brother. The actual collector where we bought it from was living and grown up in Sumer until he was 14 and then his son took over but he wasn't so deep into the mineral interest. He mm -hmm. has the love to Africa but not okay. to the minerals so we had the opportunity to buy that collection and this is one of the most amazing yeah, collections you will ever ever see. They're really old specimens, old pieces. Some of the Sumer minerals at their very very best. Um, you know, third generation Sumer collection dating back to the early 1900s. Fantastic. And this is the first time again in Munich here, first time first you've time shown it. First time we've ever shown it. It's one of the most famous collections in Europe. And uh, some of the best specimens are actually featured in Rainer Boda's book about, uh, about Namibia. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, there's actually a picture of the, the collector, Helmut Heuser, um, just before he died. So it gives you an idea, and what we're going to do is, is um, we're saving a lot of the best ones for uh, for Munich, uh, for Tucson. Mm -hmm. They all need to be cleaned and trimmed. It's a very big collection, so there's a lot of work to be done. And then we're gonna we're gonna bring them and show you some more at uh, the Westwood Look Show. Terrific. Well, yeah. we look forward to catching up with you then. Good Terrific. to see you. Thanks, Ian. Hi, look at that. Hi. How are you? <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm good. Hello. I'm good. Look at this. A famous. The famous. Uh, dealer in the United States, yeah. Hello. But you have not a booth here. <laughs> no, unfortunately. He has not the money times for are booth tough. And, and Munich. But he runs around. And what are you doing here? Uh, buying? I'm, I'm buying and selling. Would you, would you like to buy some rocks, sir? Uh, you have something for me? I, a couple of things, I think so. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you just buy me oh, one coffee. Really? For the rest of my life. Okay. What do you have? That's I so have, nice. To well, see I know you here. love tourmalines. Yeah, so. but, no, no. No, no, fluorite. Where do you know that? Oh. Fluorite. I forgot That's it's fluorite. Wrong mineral. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Danny, please. So, can we look? Yeah, look please. This is uh, new found from Barra de Salinas. And I don't know. Oh, wow. What's the color? What's the color? Can I have the lamp for a moment? Please? Yeah. Sure. That's unbelievable. It's typical for this mine. Barra de Salinas has incredible saturation of color. 
Brian, you see, this man will make me sick here. It yeah. shows me, <laughs> shows me uh, new stuff. Is it new front from Barrow Yeah, new from Barrow Desolinas, about uh, two months ago. Two months ago? Mm -hmm. I was in Brazil working on Pedinera and they had a small pocket and I was lucky to get it. It's this was the best a one. deep, from there. deep, deep green. You see that? And Jemmy in blue. Yeah. And the Very line nice. in the middle is actually a, yellow. a cat's eye. So yeah. if they cut a stone, they can get the... But you would never Did cut you a stone. Did you see it? It looks like yellow in the middle. Yeah, yeah. From the brownish to yellow and then to the green. Beautiful. Brian, can you see that in the camera? I don't know. Okay. Very nice piece. Yeah, it's beautiful. This one is also very beautiful and very unique. I've oh. never seen this combination it's before. It's some paprock tourmaline. It's paprock tourmaline with, with topaz. A, a bluish topaz, pale blue. With but turpus on it. That's... I collected a long time tourmalines, right. really. Have you but, ever seen uh, it before? No, not with uh, pop rock directly in contact. But any locality with a topaz yeah. touching the tourmaline. Yeah. I oh, I have some from, from Brazil in my collection, but uh, not from pop rock. It's the first time I see that. And are the topazes touching the, the crystal or only on the same matrix? Uh, the Brazil is touching the crystal. Touching? And from Park Rock, I have only on the same matrix. Only on the same matrix. But not uh, this, this quality of topaz. It's more, you know, milky. Mm -hmm. Not so... Not sharp cute, and not, uh, not really sharp. But interesting, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm surprised to, to see that. Also, the color is, is really good. Yeah, it's lovely. Really nice. It's a great crystal from there. It needs to be cleaned and worked. It's fresh out of the ground. It's fresh out of the ground? Fresh out of the ground. This season, production. So. Okay. So... Um, Thank you again. You're welcome. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah, um, for me, yeah. I mean, I don't let Christoph or uh, Johannes catch me. I'm like an illegal dealer here. Christoph, it wasn't me. That's not a problem. I mean. I'm with Gerhard. He invited me. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. And uh, how long you stay here? I'm leaving in four minutes to go home. Oh. Four minutes to go home to be able to make it for Halloween with my Four two minutes. children. Four minutes. I wish you a very good trip <laughs> back at home. Thank you. Have a good flight. <laughs> <laughs> See you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hello, we are here in the Alpen area of the Mineralien Tage in Munich. And we met us with Gerhard and Hannes Hofer. These two guys work in the Knappenwand, what is an old historical mine, and they give us some information and they will show us some really good stuff from this mine. Hi. Can you tell us a bit about the Knappenwand? That is to say, give the public a bit more of the history? Sure. As mentioned, the Knappenwand is a historic locality and was discovered in 1865 by a local crystal searcher. Naturally, it has been worked in various stages by various people and since 2001, Sepp Bruckner and my brother and I have been working on the locality. So almost 10 years? For 10 years, we were able to collect a really super specimen in 2007. Fantastic. Epidote with bisolid. Yes. When did you find it? 2007. 2007? Yes, it's an incredible feeling when one is able to collect something like this. Understandably. Simply incredible. Very, very nice. And here's another. Another beautiful specimen. Wonderful. Breathtakingly beautiful. It is so schön, yeah, that man. It is really nice to see fresh, relatively new material from an old historic mine. It is almost unbelievable. There hasn't been anything for years. You're right, there was nothing. A locality only survives through new finds. There is a white albite grown. Yes. These crystals are almost 10 centimeters tall. This is really a nice group. This group is unbelievable. These are three nice groups. Absolutely. We've really landed a great find there. How much time have you invested in the Knappenwand? Yes, well, one doesn't go to the Knappenwand in the middle of the summer because of the good weather in the high mountains. During spring or autumn, however, 
We've invested a lot of time, relatively, in the Knappenwand. Any idea how many hours you work there? Ah, hours. If one wanted to talk in terms of months, I would say four. 20 workdays in a month. So four months, four or five months. For five months per year? Yes, preferably during the colder months when one cannot do anything else. Weather is not an issue at the locality. It is already a small cave. Yes. And one isn't relying on the weather there. You could in principle still work there in the winter. Naturally, one reserves the summer for the high mountains. Good for crystal searches. And who looks after it during the summer? Well, we rely on the honor code. Nothing disappears. Nothing's disappeared? No. Dump collectors are allowed. If there is something laying there, anyone can take it. That's not a problem. Yeah, it's hard rock. Very hard. It's really hard work. Very hard. It is tough going with the hammer and chisel. Very good. Very, very nice. You did not just work at the Knappenmann, though. I assume you have other things? Smoky quartz from Switzerland. Ah, from Switzerland, yes. This one comes from Wallis. Wallis? It's a beautiful group, nicely healed on the bottom. And has a beautiful luster. Mm-hmm. It's classic alpine material. The kind of crystal group one gladly takes along. Yeah. Because there is little matrix. My best find of the year. Wonderful. Still, I assume it weighs a few kilos. Sure, that's okay though. I wish you much success with your future work. Yes. Yes, and I hope that we will see each other again next year. Yes. Perhaps with a new find. Ah, there's something else. Here's more for us. Our area is famous for the Sphin crystals. These ones come from the Buchgraben, a locality that has been worked on quite a bit in the last 25 years. And is a little hard to work on now due to a fair bit of slumping. However, now and then, super pieces surface. Very good. And all self-collected, of course. Yes, yes you're, you're right. right. The whole material is self-collected. <laughs> Thank you. Super. So, then Until next time, then. Next time. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello. Hello, Gerhard. Hello. You have a nice stand. Thanks. Nicely set up and decorated. Thank you. And a lot of new material. This is my son Christian. Let's have a look in the box. First is a paprock specimen. That is very, very nice. Really beautiful. On smoky quartz? On smoky quartz with a bit of an albite. And when was this found? This specimen is one and a half years old. One and a half already? It needed to be repaired. The back part was completely opened up. What I find particularly wonderful is the quality of the tourmaline. How it is nestled in the quartz and feldspar. Perfect. Lustrous. Yes, wonderful. Very aesthetic piece. Very, very, very nice specimen. Too bad you don't have a light so we could see it better. A really good mineral looks great even without a light. Then another very nice, large specimen from the 2007 find in Erongo. 2007? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Pocket 3, in fact. May I pick it up? I'm going to try to hold it nicely for the camera. I believe they call these cactus barrel. Yes, cactus barrel is a description that's been given to them. And bicolored. Can we see in the camera that the terminations are blue on top? The first two pockets had green, green-blue heads. The luster was also variable in those pockets. Yes. And the last pocket was of this quality, the most valuable. There are actually even more blue among these. 
All this is sure, a tourmaline, sometimes also small fluorides. Not on this piece, but there are other nice specimens. This is a very, very nice piece. Many, many crystals on it. And the crystal size is impressive. Not typical, is it? There were many pieces, smaller ones. The larger ones, that is to say of this size, this crystal size, were quite rare. May I hand this piece back so nothing happens? And I see you have something else. Here's another old piece, also from Arango, for me, one of the most aesthetic ever. Aquamarine. This is double terminated crystal. On smoky quartz. Smoky quartz. Very nice color. And sitting right where one wants it. Very interesting. Very aesthetic, very beautiful. Has a second crystal here, dually terminated. Where from exactly? From the farm Bergsieg at the border area of Erangoros. Very nice, very nice. Thank you very much, Jürgen. Have fun at the show. Have fun. We'll see you. And lots of nice specimens. Bye, Christian. Ciao. Have a great day. Hello, Jürgen. Hello, how's it going? Great, thank you. And you? Yes, good to see you here. Have I ever not been at the Munich show? Yeah, well, you're always and everywhere. I know. You must have twins. Multiple. <laughs> Haven't heard that one before. It's all good. So, Jürgen, Brian and I had a bit of a look around yesterday and saw your fluoroids and really liked them. Because of the never before seen extreme contrast between green and blue. Perhaps you can tell us a little bit more about it. Yes. These are surely from the Rogerly mine, I assume. When and which pocket? Well, where the pockets were found. And with the daylight fluorescence, it produces this green blue color in normal daylight without the use of UV radiation. Nice. I was just going to ask, is that normal daylight you have in there? It is daylight. Or something special? These are daylight bulbs. The same effect would occur if one took these out into the sun. In the sun? So about 4,800 Kelvin or 5,000? Yes, it is important for one to have a light source that has enough UV light, like the sun. Okay. We get this mixed green-blue color because these normally green fluorides start to fluoresce in the presence of the UV light. These make up a small percentage of the fluoride from this locality. The find is practically only from these two pockets, and unfortunately the pockets were quite damaged, so that the pieces all have small problems. But still look very, very nice. Jürgen, directly next to this, you have set up a contrasting theme, in a totally different color. Yes, these are fluorides from the Okorusu mine in Namibia. These were found about three to four years ago. So it is older material. It's older material. In these pieces, the matrix has been prepared away so that one can nicely appreciate the inner life of these fluorides. What do you mean, prepared away? What kind of material was there? This is a carbonite deposit from which the matrix is practically opaque. And this was taken off, thereby showing off the phantoms. Making them visible. And what is special here is that we actually have a cubic phantom that is oriented 90 degrees. Twisted. To the actual fluoride cube. One can see that here quite, quite well. Perhaps the camera can close in on it a little bit. So one can see that the colored fluoride, the purple one, truly is rotated 90 degrees. This is something that still needs to be really explained. Just how something like this comes into being. What strikes me is that I've seen this material before. Yes. But not in this size. Yes. One needs quite large pieces that can be prepared in order to have a fine-looking piece after the preparation. 
and to have enough material to be able to produce a nice decorative piece. Do you have something else special? And then I have something that is perhaps not so visually attractive, but it is a bit of a sensation at the Munich show. Sounds good. And those are alabandite crystals from Peru. Alabandite crystals. Alabandite is a manganese sulfide. Normally it occurs in a massive habit. Well-developed crystals are found only in this manganese silver deposit. And here is, for example, a sample that is grown on rotocross side. Still, these crystals are relatively small, but compared... You say small? Compared to anything previous, they are gigantic. I was just going to say, you say small, but I've never seen any of this size. These are roughly one and a half centimeter crystals, and the largest I know. There's a second piece. Let's swap. Oh, yes. It doesn't have a particularly pretty association mineral, but it has twins on it. There are two to two and a half centimeters. These are pieces that are well composed. Yes, relatively good here. The twin development. Rotocross side too, but rather pale here. So this is really rare material? This is a rare mineral species. It is well crystallized. And these are decidedly large, large crystals. And actually one of the new things at the show, they were only found about four weeks ago. I'm glad we asked if you had anything else to show us. Glad we were able to get together again. Very nice. We shall see you again at this show. Thank you. I thank you and wish you all the best for the show. Thank you very much. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, how's it going? Good. Let's begin with a nice aquamarine that I brought with me from my trip to Nepal last summer. From Nepal? From Nepal. And you were just there? Yes, from Tabujong. This is typical, a bit bluer, rougher than the Pakistani, which usually have just a single crystal. Yes. This is a group with a great color. This is a real group, right? Several intergrown individuals. Parallel grown. Parallel grown. Crystals that are slightly conical towards the top. Ah, quite large. Yes, fairly big, with the double terminated quartz on top. Outside of Pakistan, there really isn't much. So with this locality, it makes the piece even more interesting. That's right. I have to say that I've not seen much from Nepal either, even in the past few years. It is indeed weird that outside of Pakistan and Afghanistan there aren't many other localities. Namibia is again a bit different. Ah, I almost forgot Namibia, that's right. Nice. Have you been yourself? Yes, I've been there. When? This past summer. In summer? Yes, the first journey was a write-off. There wasn't anything. Like always, I believe, when one travels in a new country for the first time. But on the second trip, we really had some good luck and found two, three good pieces. Is this a new discovery from this one? A current discovery. Very nice. Yes, that is something else. Would be nice if one always got something special, wouldn't it? Thank you. We were also quite active and plundered nice collections, old collections. That is today, I think, quite a trend to buy collections. Certainly. There are nice things in them, like this one. It's an atomite from Ojuela mine in Mexico. There is even an old label that the piece was bought in September 1969 in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> Indeed. I'm going to take this one out of the plastic so we can see it better with the camera. Please. September 1969. And if you turn the little card over, you can see that this piece already cost $50 at the time. <laughs> $50? That would be about 200 mark, which was a lot of money in 1969. You researched that? Yes. 
Very nice. Very, very nice. This is really, compositionally speaking, and the size, you know, this is really something nice to look at. It is beautiful, and above all, quite large. And it has a good color. Beautiful composition. And on the side? It is kind of cute with that group on the side. It makes the whole piece even more harmonious. Beautiful piece. Very good. I'm glad we were able to acquire this piece. I think one always enjoys such an old piece, but it is something special when it has this kind of documentation. I am a fan of Mexico because the country is beautiful and there are fantastic colorful minerals even of gem quality, like this appetite from Durango, that surely has to be among the world's best for the location. Yes, very, very, very nice. Do you have any idea when this was found? Certainly in the 1960s as well. Oh, that long ago. There hasn't been anything out of there in a long time. The new finds are small, relatively gemmy, but in this size. It has been quite a while since anything of this size and quality has come out. What struck me above all in these many years, one rarely sees this aesthetic where a piece is freestanding like this on Matrix. Exactly. These are normally frozen in the Matrix. But this one was fortunate, obviously to be next to such a geode or cavity, to be able to crystallize so freely. So from the 60s. Very, very nice. Marcus, as always, very, very nice things. Thank you for showing them to us. You're welcome. Have a great show. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Let's go there, the old friends from my side and Michelle. Hey. <laughs> they have also a booth here in Munich. I am the look here as well. Yeah, it's a typical funny French guys here. Oh yes, and Maybe French people. We try. We yeah. try. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michelle, we yes. want to show some some uh, pieces uh, that you have specials, and uh, I see you have some yes. fantastic fluorides. We have a special fluorides from uh, France. Uh -huh. From the old mine of uh, Le Burc. Le Burc is in southwest of France. Yeah. Uh, close to Toulouse. Now the mine is closed. But I know the it's old... It's closed? Yes. How long? Uh, seven years ago. Seven years ago. So that this is, is all... under the water. But that are collection of the mine workers. Because okay. the father-in-law of my wife is close to the mine. And I know all the, uh, the mine workers. Okay. <laughs> and so you have a <laughs> special contact to the miners? Yes. A long time, a long uh, and work possibility to to come on this material yes yes i like it why the color is unusual for fluoride yes, yes. The, not that typical. blue is uh, typical of that yeah. mine and i love because i am a fluid collector <laughs> i like very much fluid. you have a flower yes yes collection, collection at home yes. private yes okay it's not hard to sell and to collecting both yes it is very very uh, i am Many times sad. <laughs> I can't I, believe you. When I must do. No, oh, it's very nice. Sold. I will show that in the camera. I hope uh, you see it very well. With the quartz. color, with the quartz. You see that here, on, mm -hmm. and the contrast from the quartz to the fluoride. Mm -hmm. It's very very nice. They are fluorescent in UV light in purple. In purple? Yes. Okay. I have one more. That one is with. Uh, a different color. Calcopyrite. Mm -hmm. And the color change at the uh, different level of the mine. So it's at a level of, uh, and the same mine? Oh, many levels. The mine was uh, 300 meters deep. Mm -hmm. And uh, the some, some pieces can be yellow and blue and or green. Depends on the, the, the level of the mine. So, in reality, you can collect it only this mine and you have a different fluoride collection from that mine? Oh, yes, but from uh, everywhere. Okay, 
from USA too, I like. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. I see in your case a really, yes. really oh. interesting uh, piece. I mean, it's an old piece, I'm not sure. Uh, can you, yeah, can yes, you take that I out can please move. for if us? I can move. This one is too much. That's well, yes. nice. That is a wonderful piece. Yeah. From Dan Negosk, Russia. Eh bien, tu m'as dit de tourner, chérie. From Dan Negosk, Russia. Mm -hmm. They found eight years ago. Yes. And uh, so big, it's the first time I have one. She's with fairy right, and the the color is uh, very very incredible. Uh, orange red and white, and the fairy right brown. The contrast is uh, very nice. And it's big. I see in the last years some of that material. Yes, yes, but, but not in this strong color. Yes, and not in this size. The color is very strong, and the size is unusual. Sometimes we can find a small, smaller piece. See but in the light. That's. You see that in the camera, uh, Brian? Is it good enough? Yes. I hold Maybe it. you can go in, in that light, no? Yeah. You see it here a little bit better? Oh, yes. Yeah. Here, maybe? No, that's fine here. Yeah. It's a really nice piece. <laughs> so, Michel, thank you very much okay, for showing. <laughs> Have a good show. Uh, yes. Hi, Ricardo. Hi. Good uh, to see you. How are you? Fine, thank you. Fine. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have something for us? Yeah. Really special? Yeah. Two pieces I think is really big special. One okay. killer uh, spindle and the one that's all right from the Okay, you can see it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You have it here? Yeah. Oh, good. That, the spindle. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> from the game. What's that? <laughs> Unbelievable. That's really. Really killer. Seven uh, five centimeter, seven point five centimeter. You, really your work was not wrong. Yeah, because right. this is really uh, red color and uh, yes. a really killer, and it's sharp also. Yes, not only a big size. Yeah, yeah. Transparent, good, really good. The locality is Goma. Look, yeah, look in. Uh, look in, with them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And when did that come out? Come out uh, about three years ago. Three, three years ago. Three years ago? Yes. That's fantastic. You have a lamp here that we yeah. can show yeah. that in the, in the camera maybe. We we'll see the, the color better. But this is really, really unbelievable. Yeah, look at that. Huh. That's great. Yeah. Ricardo, you surprised me every year. Thank you. Really nice. Oh, yeah. Sharp is really fun. Oh, yes. And a great luster. Yes, great luster. And also Jimmy Crystal. This is a azure that I like. The color is fantastic, intensive, and the luster is like a mirror. It comes from an old collection? Yeah, I take uh, one, one old collection. The piece is old, uh, around 25 years old. 25 years. It's so interesting that, you know, we live in a time that it comes from, from time to time, all stuff yeah. back to the market, yeah, yeah. what is available and... Uh, that uh, piece is in my father uh, 20 years ago. 20 years ago? You, do you follow sell? Yes. But piece. after uh, two years ago, I take back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful piece. Yes. This is a sulfur Sulfur from Sicil, uh, old piece yes. also. 78, yes. Can, can we open yes. the case? Let me see it a little bit better. That's a big spaceman. Yes. It looks like Harry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a thumbnail and it's not a miniature. <laughs> 50 centimeters, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's 
big enough, but it, it, the, the color is yeah. uh, also... Yeah. You see it from... Very strong. Yeah, yeah, if you stay 10 meters in front of your booth, yeah. you see the yellow, yeah, yeah. bright yellow. Yeah. Okay, Ricardo. Okay. Thank you very much Thank for you showing. Much, yeah. See you later. See you. Thank Thank you. Have a good Thank job. You. Thank you. Hi. Good job. Good to see you. It's good to see you again. It's been two months. two months. Two months, <laughs> yeah. It's a short time for us. Okay, and I'm sure you have some special for us. You want to see? Yeah, please. But we have a few good fluoride. Oh. So this piece, the funny thing is, I've sold this piece twice. <laughs> And it has a long story. This is Danogorsk from the early 1990s. Okay. And uh, a friend of mine, he bought this piece from Brad Van Scriver on the one coast of the United States. Okay. And then he bought this piece <laughs> from a different dealer no. on, the west, on the other coast <laughs> really? of the United States. Yes. Because he says it looks so much the same. And he brings them home and click. Can I see it? They so go it together. is repaired? Yeah, in there, but you never know. That's really funny. And, and uh, how long needs it to bring both parts together? Uh, two years apart. Two years? Yeah. And then I sold it, uh, I sold it once, got it back, Yeah. sold it again <laughs> to someone who collected fluoride, okay. and now he changes to only French minerals. Okay. So I take it back. You take it back. Yeah. What is inside the fluoride? You see the enclosures? Yeah, I think strontianite. Oh, okay. But you know, I, re I remember these days because we all thought the Downagorsk was being mined at this time, in the early 1990s. We never knew these came out 10 years before, mostly, in the 80s. So it's a really old yeah. piece. So prices were cheap for a little while. But uh, interesting. Interesting, yeah? Yeah. really interesting. Oh, look at that. That's really nice. That's really nice. Can you see the color? No. <laughs> Little color. <laughs> of course. It's a great color. And very sharp crystals. Yeah. And jemmy. Yeah, I like the matrix. You have the lamp again yeah. for a moment? Check. Look at that. That's Really, really nice. Special, yeah. When did this piece come out? Uh, I think about three years ago, four three years, years ago. Three years ago? Yeah. So it's uh, not been I, new I found? Think not new, for sure. Not new. And from where is it? Chamonix. Chamonix. It's great. It's a really great, nice piece. Yeah. This is nice. Um, is for me a surprise there was a new find okay in Madagascar in Madagascar yeah. oh. it's a funny color it, it's blue under the fluorescent light and greenish blue under halogen okay and this is a new found yeah yeah uh, July July this year this July yeah doubly terminated double terminated And uh, Rob, mm -hmm. what is the name of the locality? I can't pronounce it. I'm not even going to try. Okay. I, I, I have to tell you later. I'm <laughs> okay. sorry. Okay, you're not sure in the moment from which locality. Oh, it's a secret or? I cannot pronounce it. Okay. If I say it, I get it wrong. <laughs> so we do one more piece okay. to show to you, which is interesting. Oh. Go. But I think we let someone else who owns it now tell the story. Wow. Wow. That's a great, nice piece with a wonderful color. From Sweden, of course. So we let the owner tell the story. Okay. The owner is here. <laughs> Hi, Peter. <laughs> Please go up. Hello. Hello, Bob. Yeah. Peter, can you tell us the story behind this specimen? It was in 1988 at the Malmberg A mine, an iron mine in the north of Sweden. 1988? In 1988. That's a long time ago. This is one of the nicest specimens. 
My problem was that I had to buy out all the big pieces from the miners, so I had to sell some of my smaller pieces. I understand. So this piece was in an American collection for 20 years, and when it was up for sale, I bought it right back, of course. This is a nice story. This means 20 years ago you sold this mineral. Exactly. And 20 years later you bought it back? For 20 times the original price. It doesn't matter though. The normal inflation? This is just too nice. A really nice and wonderful piece. For me this is the most beautiful piece in the world. There are many tourmalines for a lot of money and we both love tourmalines, but for me this is one of the nicest. You had worked at that mine, right? Yes, for many years. One gets a different relationship with a stone like this than simply buying one as an outsider. And I understand you really well when you say that you're happy that you got the chance to buy back the piece. And calcite, quartz, pyrite, fluoride, all are common minerals. They're not rare. Yet for such mineral to become really fantastic, it needs more. A phosphorphalite, as we know, it's not that easy. For such a mineral to be really fantastic and unique, the quality needs to be excellent. I hope the colors show through well. If I could just hold the piece for a moment, it's an amazing twin. Butterfly twin. Indeed, a very beautiful piece. Peter, I congratulate you. Thank you. Congratulations. After 20 years, back to the home country. Now I don't need any minerals anymore. You always find something. Peter, thank you. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Have fun at the show. Hi, Jill. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah? Good time here? Yes. In Munich? Yes, we're happy to present in Munich the, our yeah. best uh, specimen of the year. Any year, I know. Yes. Any year. So we, I see you have some special this year. Yeah. And um, if it's okay for you, we want to show that to yeah. the public. Okay, sure. Uh, I see you have a fantastic aquamarine. Yes. Can we put out this aquamarine yes. from your case? Yeah. You have a special case, look at that. That's an unbelievable system you have. Okay. It's really, really safe. Yes. Nobody can touch no. in without <laughs> you. Navy, oh, look at that. Aquamarine from Pakistan, from the northern area. It's a new find. Every, t every year we have a several stay in Pakistan and we try to get but only the best. We select a lot of specimens. You go every year by yourself? Yes. Yes. And looking? Can I show the piece? Yes. Is it fixed here? Or yes, can fix it? It. it's fixed. Okay, so we we'll look a little bit in the free dimension. It's very gemmy. Yes. It's very clear. Yes. And all the faces are very shining and As good a image. Really, really good color. No dings, no chips. This is a really high quality. And it's funny, if you see little garnet inside. a little garnet here. Yes. And if I if you see that from front, we have the garnet on three sides. Yes. I'm not sure the camera see that. Here is the garnet on the back side, but we see it also in reflection on this side and on this side. So it looks like uh, more than one garnet, but it is one. I will show that in the camera on the back side. And here is the small garnet. That's a really, really nice aquamarine. And also I see you have an interesting Amethyst here. Yeah. Can you show us that yeah. piece too and um, talk a little bit from where it is? Yes. And it's very about. strange because it's two stalactites and the two crystals do like that. Yeah. And the the cave is not very big and it's very strange. The stalactite uh, is very long for yeah. the. If okay. if you if you look like that piece, it looks like you have must be having contact. Yes, yes. But it's uh, totally free, yes. no contact. No contact. I think uh, maybe one or two mm millimeters <laughs> cover. So. It's an interesting piece. Yes, very aesthetic and a very aesthetic. That's true. 
And I, I like it. If you see something unusual like pieces, yes. okay, somebody will say it's a amortized. Mm. Yeah, yes. uh, amortized is not no. uh, a real mineral, yes. of course. But in this crystallization and in this yeah. uh, aesthetical, it's a really, really, really nice piece. Yeah. Thank you for showing us. Thank you, with pleasure. I wish you a good show. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good time in Munich. Thank you. See you. See you. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Hope Brian. Hi. Come in. Um, Wolfgang Windel. Hello. Nice to meet you. Um, you're talking about the uh, material here, so we won't talk in, in German. Uh, Wolfgang, you have here an extraordinary manganite from Ilfeld, which is a classical finding site and world famous for this mineral. Um, it looks so different. Can you tell us a little bit about this piece? This comes from a recent finding, about two years ago. The digging site has been closed already in the meantime. And what's extraordinary is that this material has provided extremely bright, shining crystals. And the best piece from this find was this wonderful cross, as you can see. Sorry to interrupt you, I didn't even recognize it as a manganite at first. I've never seen this kind of luster. Me too. At first it was almost too incredible to believe how reflecting these minerals were, as they normally are rather black, with a typical metallic shine. I don't know where this luster comes from. Two years ago? About two years ago. And this is one of the absolute best from my find. Very beautiful. Thank you. I see you have prepared something else for us? Of course. I can't wait to see what you have. A world-class dolomite from Egui which was found at the beginning of the 50s. It belonged to a Spanish museum and was eventually given away to a German collector. Given away? Yes, as a present. I would like to hold it into the camera so you can see its three-dimensionality. A dolomite from Spain, an incredible size. A floater. Completely crystallized. Twins. The size is incredible and it's heavy. A very nice piece. Whoever has been to this pit knows how difficult it is to find even small specimens. But in this size, yes, in this size, in this size, and this, this perfect. This is your specialty, classic material. Of course, of course. You've been doing this for many years now. I'm on the hunt for that. Hunter and gatherer. I can see that you're expanding and expanding. Fantastic. We have reached our ideal size. I don't think I want to get any bigger. We have invested into the look of the showcases to offer our customers a good show. Let me give you this one back. Reluctantly, reluctantly. But here you go. Wolfgang, as I was walking around outside, I saw you have a pretty impressive gypsum that is a selenite specimen, also a classic. Could we just quickly have a look at it? Would it be possible? But of course. A classical gypsum specimen from Eisleben. 
These normally only exist with considerably smaller crystals. It's from the last century. The site of the find has shut down by now. Any idea about the year of the finding? I would say from about 1890 to 1920. 1890 to 1920. Yes, there's still collectors going there. But this size of find is history. As you know, I'm not familiar with these classical sites, but are you saying that people still look for crystals there? Is that what you're saying? Seven to eight years ago, there were still massive activities, but the galleries in the mine are so fragile by now, it's extremely dangerous. So it's been closed down. Could I hold it for a second? I would just like to show it to the camera, so you can see its three-dimensionality. In English we would say an old classic piece. And it's not from Mexico or anywhere else, it's from Germany, Thüringen, the eastern part of the country. That's right. I'm simply impressed that old and classical finds are put on the market again and again. It's surprising that these are not yet in collections. And as he told me, some interesting specimens are also leaving collections again. Naturally. That's the hunting, which is a lot of fun. Very nice. Let me just open that for you. I wish you a successful show. Thank you. It was nice that you came by. Take care. Thank you. Bye. We're here in Hall A5 at the Alpine exhibit, and I'm with my longtime, uh, my father's longtime friend, John Kyle Min. He is actually the one who started the whole Munich show, and up until recently has been the entire organizer of this. Good to see you, my Thank friend. Thank you so much. I remember your father, especially because we did a lot of things together in the DI. Desert Inn, you know. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, the, yeah. the historic Gold, Desert Inn. The, yeah, the historical one. Yes. Okay, uh, that's the time I met your father first. Wonderful, okay. wonderful. Now, this whole Alpine exhibit is a fantastic exhibit. Can you tell me a little bit about the exhibit in general? And then I know that there are some pieces that we will talk about afterwards. Yeah, in general, the Alpine exhibits and uh, it's surrounded by Alpine dealers and Alpine collectors, crystalliers. Uh, uh, you, you know, uh, these are the special people from France, the crystalliers and the strahlers from Switzerland mm -hmm. and uh, the collectors from uh, the Bavarian Alps and so on. These people uh, here surrounding the special exhibit, uh, they uh, come to sell what the, uh, they find in the Alps by themselves. These are all original, not miners, climbers mm -hmm. in the Alps. Yeah. Now, you were telling me a little bit about uh, this wonderful display of amethyst that you kind of started uh, at Tucson earlier this year. So yes. please describe yeah. a little bit about this. There was one uh, special pocket in uh, Traversella mm -hmm. in Italy uh, uh, where uh, the miners 1959 discovered one pocket of quartz crystals, uh, means uh, very nice amethyst. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I went to Tucson in 64, first time, okay. and I saw one amethyst from the Alps. I did not believe yes. that uh, in the Alps uh, such that a this can be formed. Uh, uh, kind of material is coming out. I bought immediately the, the only one I, I, I saw there, and then I put it in my collection and forgot it. Okay. And uh, this year we came to the Travasella area to make a special exhibit. Uh -huh. And in the museum they uh, showed me a, a five centimeter amethyst. I asked, is that the Travasella mine? Yes. Uh, can you show me some better one? No. It is, everything is uh, spread out to the collectors. We never had in the museum a chance to, to buy something. The museum was founded 20 years ago. No kidding, uh, not, okay. Not yes. in 60, not in uh, 59, uh, where they, uh, they When they found the pieces. That was the idea now, uh, to bring together all uh, the, from different collectors the nice uh, 
um, amethysts from Travacella. Uh -huh. And the result is 25 or more uh, uh, specimens from collectors. And now we give that uh, showcase back to uh, Torino Museum and we'll uh, show that up and in, in, in some magazines they will uh, start a, a new uh, request to all the collectors to bring more into that uh, special exhibit and I, I guess we will have uh, 50 at the end uh, Fantastic! To bring back and to have a complete show. Never been together uh, uh, since 59 in the mine. Yes, yeah, so this is the first time this family is brought back together, yes. this family of amethyst. Hopefully by next year um, you will receive more amethyst from the Travesella region. You will have a bigger display and we will cover this next year. That's what we can do and can try to do. So if you have one of the Travesella uh, amethyst and you are watching this movie, there's a phone number right now at the bottom of the screen and this is John's phone number. You can please contact him. Uh, there is also, we will also put an email here. So please contact John via phone or email. Let him know that you have this because we want to build a bigger collection for next year and really bring all of these uh, Travesella uh, amethysts together. Okay. For those of you who have watched What's Hot in Tucson, uh, you're familiar with uh, some of these boxes that we're about to take a look at. John, please explain to me, uh, to ex please explain to our guests what boxes we're talking it's about a here. It's story. Collectors are collectors. And uh, Rich Cosner was a good friend of mine. Yes. And uh, I always was happy in his house to, to, to wait on uh, opening uh, uh, box by box That's and right. now uh, I asked for this special Alpine uh, exhibit I know exactly do you hear the, the cow <laughs> this is the cowbell we can hear in the background <laughs> there are all kinds of things going on in this Alpine area Alpine we have area. singers we have cowbells we have uh, you have ice sculptures with with crystals hidden in that the people must melt with their hands this is actually absolutely wonderful and Rich is, uh, was always this collector with his special boxes and I knew exactly that he collected alpine minerals. And then I asked Teresa uh, uh, and uh, the both boys uh, to bring us a special uh, uh, exhibit, for the special exhibit now, uh, this uh, uh, items out of his collection. Out of his and collection. It is fantastic. He brought, she brought two of the uh, best uh, fluorides, red fluorides, in the original boxes of Rich Cosner. And that is why the history is still in Munich very alive. Yes. Now, has there ever been a collection of uh, Mont Blanc Alpine specimens like this ever in the world? Never come together. Never come together? No. In some museums, in Chamonix, uh, for sure, in uh, Lausanne, uh, in um, uh, in Paris, yes. because the French uh, uh, material is always going to the French main museum. Yes. And in uh, the Ecole de Mines uh, in Paris, uh, they have local uh, collections, but never come together the, uh, all the... Uh, all the different sides. Uh, yes, and from, from the different collectors. They hid them at home. They never brought them out. That's uh, the so, main thing. So a lot of this is it's first time it's ever first, been on exhibit. First, first time on exhibit, yeah. And again, I keep saying this, this seems to be a theme that is running throughout this entire Munich show, but this is like a museum. It is a museum within a mineral show. Many things are the first time ever on public display. The museum in Torino wants to have our showcases for uh, next half a year yes. with their material so they can show up the entire co uh, collection which they showed here for three days. We, they have the sh chance uh, to have it for the next half a year in the museum in Torino. So that's, that's incredible. Nice. You are creating display cases for your show yeah. that are then becoming museum exhibits. Right. And the architecture that you have in here uh, to come on. kind of create this, uh, this feeling is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Yes, yeah. we have more to see. Yeah. Okay. John, please tell me about our uh, Laurent. Uh, that is one of the outstanding specimens we uh, ever had in the show. Uh, because it is a, a, in a Paris specimen from the uh, Paris Museum. And okay. they, um, there are some specimens uh, like Mona Lisa, mm -hmm. the, uh, yes, well the famous painting, painting, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, uh, which never will uh, uh, leave the country. This is correct. And um, 
the Laurent is now the first one which is such a specimen in France mm -hmm. since uh, the month of, uh, what was it, in July. They decided that the specimen never have to leave the country. Really? But the specimen uh, uh, has a special permission. <laughs> they make an exception for your yes. show. Uh, because it is the first specimen, mineralogical specimen, which uh, has that standard. Fantastic. Uh, became to that standard. And now um, it is um, a, a, a funny story that everybody wants uh, to bring it to Munich, to that show. Everybody in <laughs> the museum. And they went to all the administrative uh, uh, um, areas or levels. Mm -hmm. And they, at the end, we could have a special uh, permit to bring it out and to show it in that important uh, alpine mineral show for the Mont Blanc area. That's um, fantastic. So, your Munich show, they knew that you were putting the special Mont Blanc exhibit together, right. and they know how important the Munich show is, so they gave you one of their country's natural treasures. And this is the to first... Explain. The first time it has ever come out of... The first uh, mineral, which is... Which uh, is the nat national treasure. That's it. And, and, uh, uh, and they finally, and it, here, it comes out for the first and time. Is, and it is uh, red, the red fluorides and the uh, brown or black uh, uh, quartz, quartz uh, in, in front of uh, the Mont Blanc historical uh, painting in the uh, other museum in uh, Paris, which is Ecole de Mines, mm -hmm. on, the, on the wall. And we took a photo and replaced it here Pre in it. the background of that fantastic Laurent. Uh, the money for that Laurent came from, what do you think, oil company. Yes, of course. From Total. Uh -huh. And uh, they uh, spent the, uh, the money for the specimen. The specimen is, was bought in March this year. No kidding. Yeah, that, uh, it, it was found two years ago. And uh, Fantastic. it is really good. And I think uh, we are very, very uh, happy that the Paris National Museum uh, sent that specimen by uh, special courier and so on uh, to the show. This, this is, is a great is honor. Outstanding. Yes, yeah. indeed. Well, okay. I cannot wait to see what you do next year for yes, the Munich show. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a secret now. <laughs> Thank you very Good much, see. John. Good to okay. see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Gerhard, we're standing here inside what looks like a mineral museum that we had seen uh, from up on the balcony. And this is just, it's an incredible thing. Can you tell me a little bit about where we are here? Yeah, of course, I can do that. Uh, what we have here is um, a special area. Uh, it's like a museum mm -hmm. in minerals. Mm -hmm. So the Caymans uh, take every year a new special team. Okay. And with, uh, Every year is changed, and this year is the beauty of Brazilian. The Brazilian yeah. Brazil beauties. Fantastic, this is and, so good. And uh, if we go inside and we want to show this material, I, you can believe me, you say only, wow, that's uh, unbelievable, amazing in my opinion, what we see now. And so do the Kyomans, do they, every year they put on an exhibit like this to the degree of professionalism that <laughs> yeah. we will see here? Yeah, is that not amazing? This is you, fantastic. You must think about it. You know, the show is three days open, yes. regular. And for three days they built such a museum and every year new. Wow, this is so much work. This is an incredible amount yeah. of work for what we're about to see. Yeah. Shall we begin? Oh, yeah. Lead the way, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Let us go. Brian, um, it's hard to say uh, in every case it's amazing what we see because every case is unbelievable. This is one example what, uh, what brings it on the point. What we have here is the rubellites from the Jonas Mine. The Jonas Mine is the famous found in May 1978. Uh, what comes this color out and a lot of these pieces are the first time displayed in the, to the public. So we have here a range of wonderful deep red color tourmalines and I never see that before. And so it is a pleasure to stay in front of this case to see all that stuff.
We are staying here on another case. And what we see here is uh, all aquamarines in the first line, but very, very, very beautiful. Uh, for me, it's the first time I see this basement and uh, it's fantastic to see which quality come out in Brazil. And all these aquamarines are from Brazil and um, it's an unbelievable size. On the second bottom, you see uh, uh, different types of minerals. We have uh, here a green uh, barrel, so it's an heliodor. Uh, this is a fantastic and famous piece, a tourmaline with lepidolite. Uh, the, we have a scepter tourmaline here, a uh, green red. Also a topaz, who has uh, lepidolite around his faces. A scepter tourmaline again. And the really funny thing I mean is this piece here with the appetite on the tourmaline. Also we have emeralds from Brazil. It's a quality nearly like from Colombia. So it uh, surprised me to see such a quality from Brazil. Here we see another aquamarine. Um, this type is very different because it's not a typical kind of crystallization. It's adds on a natural way, so we have this interesting form here. Here we are in a, in a single case, and what we see is a spodumen. Uh, the funny thing is uh, we have two different crystals. The one crystal stay on the other crystal, but it's totally natural. And it is two colors, so it is a kunzite on the bottom and the spodumen on the top. It's a very fun, fun piece. Uh, it's for me also the first time I see this.
we're here in uh, Hall A5 and we are in the Fossil Park and this is a recurring exhibit, uh, although it changes every year, that they have here at the Munich Show. And Anasus has uh, joined me today to talk to me a little bit about uh, what we have here at Fossil Park. So yeah. Anasus, please tell me a little bit about the fossils here. Yeah, here we show fossils from Brazil. They come from the Santana Formation. This formation is called Santana Formation because there's a small village and this, the name of the village is Santana. Mm -hmm. And these fossils are out of the Cretaceous, so 115 to 118 or 20 million years old. I've gone around and I've looked at a bunch of uh, the displays here. And first, I have to say that the way that you have displayed it, absolutely fantastic. Thank you. You have these almost, they look like cascading yeah, waterfalls yeah, yeah. Of, uh, yeah. of cloth. And then almost suspended in the waterfall are these picture frames yeah. with these just outstanding fossils in it. This Santana Raptor that you have, yeah. this is a, a pretty important find. It doesn't even have a label on yeah. it because yeah. it is so new. Yeah. There, my understanding is you've only found bits and pieces of yeah. it before, right. and this is the most perfect, yeah. most complete yeah. fossil ever, ever, ever known. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. There's yeah. so much detail that you yeah. can see yeah. in this, yeah. it's, and it's complete. Yeah. This is very rare, and for you to bring this to a show like this, yeah. this is like a museum here. It is. Yeah. What about this flying reptile? Yeah. I can see details in the fossil. Yeah. It looks like it's the texture of his skin. Am I seeing this yeah. right? Yeah, it looks like you see the, the leather skin and it's organic preservation. Mm -hmm. So when you put it under ultraviolet, you can see the organic uh, structure. The organic pieces organic, fluoresce, yeah. 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 so yeah. They, yeah. they become brighter yeah. under uh, ultraviolet light. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of fish here. Yeah. And you have this absolutely engaging display where you come up the steps here yeah. and there is, it's, it's almost like a scene of nature yeah, right. with fossilized fish, fish in, swimming with the real fish. Yeah, yeah right. This is, this is outstanding. Yeah. Oh. And so people can walk over this yeah, and they can look right yeah, down yeah. beneath their feet yeah. and they can see the fish down here. Yeah. And um, all kind of fishes. And the most spectacular is the Zulakan. Mm -hmm. This is uh, called living fossil, and that is very spectacular in this um, fish exhibition. Now why is it called a living fossil? Because it's still alive. They found it in the 1960s in front of the Comor, and it's a still it's a fossil which they thought it's only it, it's ausgestorben. It, they thought it's um, no more alive, and then extinct. they found it extinct. Yeah, okay. right. And now they found it again, and so... So this animal is still alive? Yeah. This from the Cretaceous period, yeah. it is longer, still alive. Longer, longer. Longer than the Cretaceous yeah, period. Yeah. And it's still alive today. Yeah. How are the people re responding to the way that you've exhibited everything here? Oh, they like it. Sometimes they think it's not real because it's too beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> they expect it to be uglier yeah, for fossils. Yeah, 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 they can't believe that it's really a fossil. Oh, yeah. that's great. This is, this is really a... Uh, it's almost a three-dimensional yeah, presentation yeah, yeah. of something that is uh, very flat. It is just yeah. a fossil. And uh, you've got a real garden here. You've got palm trees and grass and flowers growing here. This is really, this, this is incredible. I, I, I said this before, but this is very yeah. much like a, like a museum that you yeah, would come just to see this. Yeah. And this is just one part of the Munich show. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Doing a fantastic job. Thank we you. hope to see you again next year. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Okay. We're here in the gem world at uh, Hall B6, and I'm here with my friend Haifa Mahatbi, and we're gonna talk a little bit about what we're seeing here. This is actually, it is an area that is set apart a little bit from the rest of the dealers that are here in this, uh, kind of considered the, the gem part and the, the, uh, the bead part of, uh, of this part of the, the Munich show. Please tell me a little bit about what we're seeing here. Why, who are these people here? Actually, this is the heart of this hall. It shows people Beautiful sculptures, beautiful jewelry, just gives an idea what to do with minerals, what would be this next step with minerals. Because people, when they came, come here, mm -hmm. they always had the idea of minerals, to look at them, put them somewhere. Here we give an idea what could be the next step. Cutting them, uh, doing nice sculptures like we see with the artists doing it here. Mm -hmm. So just to give people an idea and also educate them. Because a lot of people, they don't know what to do with them also. 
This is, I mean, I see some fantastic things here from various uh, uh, companies. We've got some incredible, really, they're, uh, they're objects of art, museum quality objects of art, all created from natural yes. material, natural yes. rock material. It's incredible. It's like a gift for the people here to see these kind of things. And then, I mean, some, some of the finest cut stones and collections of cut stones. We have a whole suite of uh, Paraiba tourmalines that we've looked at here. Uh, we have a wonderful suite of, of rubies, of uh, uh, sapphires, of emeralds, diamonds. I mean, this is really, it's kind of, it's in the mineral world equivalent, it would be like the Westward Look show to the rest of uh, Tucson. It is really kind of the, the cream, the, the top it artists, the top. the top dealers. Yes. This is some fantastic stuff here. It is really fantastic stuff. And I'm proud to be here and to see this every day. So, and I think all the people here, they appreciate seeing that too. So I think it's a good idea to have this here in the middle and to show people what we have. This is one for, and this whole area behind us, it's been kind of separated out a little bit. We have some nice tables and uh, chairs here. Who designed this this entire area with the lighting and everything? Who was responsible uh, for that? It was actually Christoph Keilmann, mm -hmm. which I really respect because he had this idea to change a little bit the whole thing of the mineral base in Munich. Okay. So he said we have to separate an area which is special which really um, people see it from the far and they just want to go and see what is going on in here. So he did a very good job, I think, and people love it here. I mean, everybody who comes in the hall, mm -hmm. they have to come in the middle and see what is going on, why all the people are coming here. You know? So it's really, he did a very good job, I have to tell him, and it's just beautiful and people appreciate it. Absolutely wonderful. I mean, it, it really is breathtaking, some of the things that we're seeing here. Uh, really, objects of art, one of a kind, uh, the likes of which you just, you're really not going to see anywhere else. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. For anyone who's ever done a mineral show, you know that walking around can actually build up quite a hunger. Well, behind me is one of the many food stations that they have here at the Munich show. They have all different kinds of food. They have Greek foods, they have sit-down restaurants, they have little cafes. This is a cafeteria-style uh, restaurant. They have a vegetarian, all different kinds of things. They even have little uh, beer places where you can pick up a nice cold beer or a glass of wine. Absolutely convenient and fantastic for everyone coming here. It really is a treat. We're here with Dan Razov, the PR manager for the entire Munich show. Dan, thanks for joining me today. Great having you here, Brian. Thank you. You guys have done an outstanding job really marketing the show and raising awareness of it. I mean, fantastic job. This place is packed. One thing that I see that really excites me more than anything is the number of kids that are here. And the show has really kind of become family oriented. It's a family oriented destination. Tell me a little bit about the activities that we have here and the whole philosophy behind uh, the whole people the entire organization yeah. and how you're marketing the uh, the Munich show here. I mean, obviously we're a trade show, so uh, business is uh, the most important thing to us. But at the same time, it's also about passion. And if you if you look behind you, you know, it sounds like a, a swarm of buzzing bees or something. There's actually, uh, are actually machines and kids carving out fossils that were just split it in the back over there and we you know we import stuff uh, from the states actually where we can you know where kids find actually fossils in them so they're rich of fossils fantastic and uh, it's just it, you know it's very appreciated by by the the visitors that come as you know on friday we have the the professionals professional visitors coming but saturday and sunday is open to the public Okay. And that's very important. We want we want the public to come, and they actually love this show also because of the activities that have that we have for kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's great to watch TV and computer games, all of those things. But once you once you're actually doing an activity where you touch something, where you're actually carving something, discovering something, and you're in contact with nature, and it's something that we want to uh, draw the attention to. The nature is, I guess, exciting. Mm -hmm. It's exciting to discover things like being Indiana Jones or something. <laughs> exactly. And, and not everybody can go to the jungle or wherever, you know. Right. Uh, so that's, it, it, we kind of bring it here. We bring the excitement here. We, we bring uh, stones that are rich with fossils and kids discover it, find it, and it's just, uh, it's fun. And it's just, you know, if you look at these kids, I mean, they're just, they're just blissful and happy, I guess, and, and passionate. And, oh. 
the greatest thing is when you see a kid's face just light up because he or she discovered something. And like you said, you have the fossil splitting, the fossil preparation. You have uh, behind us a little sand pit where the kids are digging exactly, things out. Exactly. You've got a list of 160 different minerals that the kids can find <laughs> there and compare against this chart. Yeah. Gold panning, exactly. soapstone carving. Yeah. And my understanding is that kids under, what is it, 10? Under 10. Are free? Exactly, they get in for free. And you know, this is something that, that just families and visitors really appreciate because you know, they can come here, they can do the shopping, because it's about shopping really. Right, right. But you know, they can leave their kids here and they discover stuff, they can take the trophies that they found, the fossils, home. I mean, these are things that you know, they will remember. And, and they, they will come gladly with their parents and so it's, it's kind of good for everybody because it's a win-win for everybody. Absolutely. Uh, you so know, the parents have time to kind of go shopping and leave the kids here. So you're really creating the next generation of collectors, whether it be for fossils or minerals or whatnot. I think this is, this is something that's very beautiful about our show, or I would say the mineral and gem shows in general, is that, you know, it's about business, but it's also about passion. Absolutely. I think that and really hits it. It's the passion. It's the passion. It. And it's, it's the passion is the real motivation behind it. You know, we love to buy stuff, sell stuff, but it's the passion behind it that drives us and that in the end, you know, makes us, I guess, happy. And so we're very, you know, great. It's a great feeling to see these kids uh, just wanting to come here, wanting to come to the show. And, you know, it's good for everybody. Absolutely. Well, you speak of passion, and I see passion in your eyes about this show. You guys are doing a great job. Thank Thanks you very so much. much, Brian. Take care. At Blue Cat Productions, it's obvious that we're all about movies. And if they're mineral movies, that much the better. But we're here in Hall B5 right now. We're actually in the movie theater that they've created for the show. They've got padded benches here. And as you can see, it's filled with people enjoying the mineral movie that's playing in the background right now. This also doubles as an area where they have presenters come up and give different speeches and different presentations. This is a great little area to come relax and have fun. I'm going to go watch this movie. So as you can see, Munich is really an incredibly diverse show. There's so much to cover, such as everything that goes on here at Wellness Island, which we just don't have time to do. But here you have all kinds of massage therapies, uh, training, uh, mineral-infused water. We couldn't even cover the bead uh, dealers. There's just, this is really an incredible show. So much to cover. Hopefully we'll come back next year. Uh, we can cover all the things we didn't get to this year, and we can continue to see what's hot in Munich. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for watching What's Hot in Munich, featuring the highlights of last year's show. We would like to invite you to the Mineral World Munich 2011, from October 28 to 30. The Mineral World is part of the Munich show O Mineralien Tage München, Europe's top show for minerals, fossils, gems and jewelry, now in its 48th year. We have an exciting and exclusive program for you. This year, the Mineral World Munich is dedicated to the European classics. Europe is rich in history and tradition regarding the searching, collecting and dealing with rare and beautiful stones. We will present European masterpieces such as the world famous Kongsberg silver. For the first time this incredible untouched silver will be shown to an audience outside of Norway. Kongsberg is regarded by collectors and museums as the place with the most beautiful silver specimen in the world. Important for the realization of our special exhibits are collaborations with renowned museums like London, Paris and Vienna. Whether as an exhibitor, dealer, collector or visitor, we invite you to come to the fascinating world of beautiful stones at the Munich Show 2011 from October 28 to 30. Find out more at munichshow.com. You can also call us at the show number or send an email to info at munichshow.com. Don't forget, Munich is your access to the European market. See you at the Mineral World of the Munich Show 2011.